guys, Jay here. Welcome to Eons of Battle. Every year, I like to look back on all of the miniatures that I have painted in that 12 month time period and just see what does painting full time look like. It looks like a lot. It looks like 431 miniatures. Oh. <laughs> it kind of feels like this is what the year is building towards. And I always try at the very end of the year to like bump those numbers up just to get that number a little higher, even though it doesn't matter at all. It would not matter if I painted 500 miniatures or five miniatures. It doesn't really mean anything. But man, having all of these miniatures out in front of me, it took about three hours to track down all of these miniatures. I have a spreadsheet where I keep track of when and how I painted every single model. And man, it is a lot. I have got about six kill teams, thousands and thousands of points of Warhammer 40,000. This guy, which I am really, really excited about. You know what? Should we eat dessert first? Because I really enjoyed having this guy in my collection. And there's one miniature actually that I painted this year that does not appear on this desk, and that is the Warhound Titan. Earlier on this year, I painted a Warhound Titan, Big Mac, the McDonald's Warhound Titan, and I, I really liked that model, and it was really fun, and I might have another Warhound around here somewhere that I would like to paint and get all done in my Sutra Vora color scheme, but I traded that miniature for the Reaver Titan, my favorite Titan. It is immaculate. It is amazing. Nobody should get a Titan. They are horrible garbage minis, but holy cow, do they have an incredible presence in a collection. I love this guy. I will occasionally, like if I can't sleep or if I just have a little bit of free time, I'll just go over and look at him because he is glorious. Old Stompy, the Reaver Titan. By far the worst Titan in terms of rules, but my favorite Titan. Oh, look at his cute wheel head. He's not glued yet, so I can make his little head wiggle. It's like when your dog is asking a question, just, hmm? <laughs> I love the Reaver Titan. I don't have a lot of desire for more Titans, although working on my Black Templar a lot this year, because this is kind of the year of 40k. Last year, I was doing a lot of skirmish and a ton of kill team. But Warhammer 40,000 10th edition has kind of revamped my love of Warhammer 40,000. So I have been really working to get all of my armies playable. I added about 2000 points of Black Templar, a new Tyranid army, a smattering of orcs. And that's about it. I have more Warhammer 40,000 planned, and after painting this little Knight Lancer, I kinda wanna do an Imperial Knights army because I really like the idea of different play styles and games, and that's actually why two thirds or one third of this table is not 40K. But I really like just alternate game styles or alternate feelings in games. I like experiencing something brand spanking new and knights. I mean, they're they're just giants. They're Warhammer giants, but as a faction in Warhammer 40k. And it's really, really interesting. And now that I have my color scheme Suture Vora, but mine are Loyalist Suture Vora, just to make people annoyed on the online, I really, really like the idea of the knights. I've got 2,200 points of Titan, like 140 points of knights, 2,000 points of Black Templar, uh, five to 600 points of orcs, I've done a heck of a lot of 40k painting, but probably half of this table is Warhammer models, and then the other third is other games. And I really like painting things for other games because it's a palette cleanser. I get to try lots and lots of different things, and a lot of those things are Star Wars, and I absolutely adore Star Wars so much. I, I tried so much with oil paint, so much with contrast paint and speed paint. It has been quite a year. and I'm really, really happy with the painting I did this year. I'm pretty much happy with every single model, but there's a few. There's a few this year that I didn't feel like really made it. And chief among them has got to be my ships for a lovely little game called Armada. This is a game from a company called Mantic and their boats. 
And I like boats. I am a huge fan of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I love all three movies. They're so good. It's amazing, just a perfectly crafted little trilogy. And it's so great that they didn't milk it or make just a whole bunch more movies that aren't very good. They just made three great movies and then ended it. Perfect franchise. But these boats, I paint them with oil paints. <sighs> I love watching people paint online and they do such amazing, incredible things with oils. And I just can't do it yet. I keep trying and I'm going to keep trying because there's definitely some things that oils do a lot better than normal acrylic paints. And these boats are okay. This one's pretty good, the little fire boat. There's other boats that don't look quite as good. And it's just, it's hard to predict what oil is going to do. And so I kind of want to go over these boats again and just kind of fix them up a little bit, put on some acrylic paint to clean up some of the messy, messy blending that I did with the oils. And I just need to find a container that will store these boats. Right now they're just out on a shelf because I bought a container and the sails are too big. And they're, they're on wooden bases, so it's hard to get magnets under them to get them to actually stick down to movement trays nicely, which is my preferred way of having miniatures, because I feel like I've dropped almost every mini on this table at some point. I am super clumsy and not careful at all. So anything I can do to remove danger from interacting with my miniatures is something that I want to do. But yeah, I really like Armada, and I've painted not enough ships for the game. I painted my crew, the Basilion fleet, but I have a few other teams of ships that I need to paint up. We've played a bunch of this game and it's a really, really good game. It reminds me a lot of the game Star Wars X-Wing, which is my personal favorite miniature war game of all time. X-Wing in like 2015 was the greatest war game ever made. And Armada definitely scratches a lot of that itch. But one thing that I find that as much as I love other games and how much they've been a great palette cleanser for Warhammer. Warhammer never ends. Warhammer never finishes. If I paint one Space Marine, it's nice. I add it to the collection. The Templar Crusade grows, but it's a drop in the bucket. It's a drop in the bucket for all the different detachments I want to run from the new Space Marine Codex, all of the different combinations of units I want to try out. I have 12,000 points of Black Templar and I always feel like I don't have enough Crusaders. I don't have enough Eliminators. I don't have enough Desolation Marines. It's a never ending cycle. And so these other games kind of give me the opportunity to have something all wrapped up in a nice little bow, something that I can call finished. And unfortunately, none of these other game systems are finished in my opinion. I have like half of an army for Conquest, the last argument of Kings. I have almost enough painted miniatures for Relic Blade from Sean Sutter. I have a smattering of units for Fallout Wasteland Warfare. I have like half of the range done for Star Wars Shatterpoint. A smattering of Star Wars Legion, which is another game I absolutely love. It's Star Wars 40K and it's so much fun. And the minis paint up really nicely and really quickly, but I don't give them enough time to really, really get them into a spot where I can say that they're finished and all wrapped up nicely. I even painted some these aren't action figures. These are game tokens for the game Nemesis. I painted all of the heroes. Nemesis is a really, really fun kind of RPG board game ripoff of Alien, where everybody takes a crew member who have different abilities that can help you complete some of the quests in the ship, like repairing the engines or getting the escape pods ready to go. And you all sort of work together, but you all have ulterior motives. The, a, a very common uh, secondary objective card in the game is you can win the game by helping everybody work together and get back to Earth and be safe and defeat all the aliens. But the reverse of the card will often say you also win the game if only you survive. If everybody else at the gaming table is dead and you're still alive, you win the game overall. And so sometimes you're just playing the game and you're like, I could push you out the airlock right now. I might not want to because I think there's an alien behind that door and I might need your help later, but I could do that and the game is kind of incentivizing me to do that. So it was really fun to paint up those miniatures for that board game. I don't paint a lot of board game minis because board games go in cycles, kind of like these war games go in cycles of we play it and play it and play it and we really, really get into it. And then we switch to Kill Team and then we switch to Warhammer 40,000. 
when we're probably going to switch to Warcry because Warcry is a really, really fun game. I've only played it a couple of times, but those couple of times were really, really fun. And I have been wanting to get back into Star Wars Legion because I painted this guy, the A5 speeder truck for the Rebel Alliance. I started a Rebel Alliance army because I want all of the armies in Star Wars Legion, the battle droids, the clone troopers, the rebels and the Imperials. And I was least excited for the Rebel Alliance. So I thought, I'll start with the Rebel Alliance to get them out of the way first, and then I can collect some of the armies that I'm a little bit more excited about. And I've kind of fallen in love with the Rebels, and I've fallen in love with this truck. Look at this thing. Number one, it's enormous. And I actually used oil paints on this guy, and it looks pretty good. I actually managed to get oil paint looking okay. It does a really good job of putting really, really black lines in all of the recesses. It tinted the cream color that I used a little bit darker and a little bit beigier. I really, really like how this sucker turned out and it really makes me want to play with it in game. It is the party bus. This thing can transport so many rebels and is decently survivable and it's kind of unique in the game. It's not very good, but it does a lot for you in game. It lets a lot of things get transported really safely and lets you just dump them out into the middle of combat. And this little turret moves. Didn't want to, but it moves. I should put a magnet in there so that's a little bit looser. I love this boat so much. I think light colored models just tend to work out a little bit more than really, really dark models. I mean, take a look at this guy compared to this drop pod. Eh, like this thing looks awesome and this drop pod just looks black because it kind of is. It's really, really dark and it's a Black Templar's drop pod. So it makes sense for it to be really, really dark. But I've really been getting into light colored models. And speaking of nice, bright colored models that I've kind of fallen out of love with Star Wars Shatterpoint. I the game's OK. I have played it a bunch of times. It's fine. It feels very board gamey, which I'm OK. I would be OK with if it was a board game. But as a tabletop war game, I just don't feel like when I finish a game and I either won or I lost, it doesn't feel like a war game. It doesn't feel like I was a, str a strategic genius or a general who's commanding their forces in battle. It kind of feels like you just pick characters and you get these lovely cards with the splash art on them and you just kind of go through the motions of their power ups and abilities and you hold objectives. Every game is objective based. I get it. But with Star Wars Shatterpoint, it feels a little bit lamer because you've got a grid of nine objectives and then you pull cards to see which objectives are, act are active this turn. And it's just the same. It's just the same every time. And so if it's going to be the same every time, maybe I don't need to spend 100 hours working on the miniatures for the game. Every now and then I might pick one up if I really, really love it Ooh, like these. Magna Guards, the IG-100 Magna Guards. I absolutely love just this character from Star Wars. Remember when Anakin and Obi-Wan are fighting on General Grievous's flagship and you first see these guys and the lightsabers don't go through their spears and they're fighting and Obi-Wan cuts one of their heads off, but then it keeps fighting and it's just, oh, it's just awesome. I love the battle droids so much. So I definitely needed to paint these guys up, but Overall, there are other games that I'm a little bit more excited for, and I think I'm going to be focusing on moving into the new year. I only painted a smattering of Star Wars Legion, and literally this little pile over here is like my favorite stuff on this table. I mean, it's him. He's the favorite. But this little pile over here brings me so much joy. The A5 speeder truck, my little scout troopers with the camo on them that I worked so hard to get the green stuff looking OK and Bosk, Sabine Wren, and Darth, or not Darth Vader, Boba Fett are like my three favorite miniatures. Sometimes I think about, sometimes I fantasize a little bit about a fire that just burns up all of my things and then I, I don't have anything, because it's just, there's a lot to think about and keep track of with all of these miniatures. As I said, there's a spreadsheet <laughs> of all of these miniatures. And I think, what miniatures would I grab? The, 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 you know, there's a, we sprung a gas leak at Eons of Battle Industry and fire is raging through the studio and I can only grab a few things. I might go for the Star Wars Legion. I just love these minis so much. They're so much fun. They don't take very long to paint. Sabine took a long time because she's ridiculous, but 
Bosk and Boba Fett probably took about three hours each. They weren't that bad at all, and they just turned out lovely. So I think I want to spend a lot more time working on my Star Wars Legion armies. Another game system that I had trouble with this year is Fallout Wasteland Warfare. At Adepticon this year, I bought a ton of Fallout Wasteland Warfare. A lot. Way, way, way too much. But I love Fallout New Vegas. It is my favorite video game of all time. And it, there's Securitrons for the game. There's a little Securitron. So I absolutely had to get like everything for the game. And I've played it a bunch of times now. And it's okay. It's a very different style of war game. It's not really a war game. It's a role playing game where you pick characters from the Fallout games and you kind of build a little adventure. And there's really fun stuff in the game. Like Brahmin, everybody knows the two headed cows from from Fallout. Like if if you do something around the Brahmin, they might stampede and that just becomes a really, really fun adventure part of the game. But you need a lot of stuff for Fallout Wasteland Warfare. And of course, we could always play with quarters and nickels and dimes and just make it work. But I want I want all the fun toys and I want them to be painted and look nice. But it takes a long time. I painted 20 miniatures this year for Fallout Wasteland Warfare, and I feel like I would need to paint 40 more and a board and some accessories like a Nuka-Cola truck to really, really feel like I'm playing the game properly. And I don't know if I have the time or the energy to do that, but I had a lot of fun this year painting these models up and painting them in a kind of a different style. These are quite a bit more, I don't want to say realistic, but real to life than a lot of other miniatures I paint. I mean, there's a big difference between this pack Brahmin and this Imperial Knight. It's a, a very different vibe between these two miniatures, and I really, really like it. So Fallout Wasteland Warfare is definitely going to be one that I keep working on because I have this fantasy. I have this fantasy of this perfect game of Fallout Wasteland Warfare where I've got a handful of Nuka-Cola caps for currency, and I've got all of the different dice and the hundreds of and hundreds and hundreds of effects tokens that are in the game. Literally, you can do everything, and that's what makes the game great and bad. You can drink a Sunset Sarsaparilla, and it does something, and you might want to, but you might not want to. You might want to drink a Nuka-Cola, or you might want to take a Chem, or, you know, which weapon do you choose? Do you choose Baseball Bat? Do you choose Spiked Baseball Bat? Do you choose Metal Baseball Bat? Like, what exactly do you want to do in this particular game of Fallout Wasteland Warfare? And it's so much fun that it's so deep but it's also challenging that the game is so, so deep. Although speaking of games that are so, so deep, Warhammer 40,000 is the deepest game of all time. And not really in terms of like the rules. You can get it pretty quick, but it's impossible to master. I, I talked to some people who really, really know their stuff with Warhammer 40,000, and I still feel like I barely understand the appropriate order of operations when attacking or defending, or exactly how to allocate dice, or who gets to punch first when both units have the strike's first keyword, or what exactly models am I allowed to target with the precision ability. There's so, so much to it, and I have so many armies I'm working on. My new Tyranids from Leviathan, my ramshackle Mad Max orcs, which I want to add a ton to in this upcoming year. And I've already added, I've already brought it up to 2000 points this year. So I have an orc army, but that's not enough. I need some beast snaggas. I need some of the super cool new orc miniatures. And so that's, ah, oh, that's going to be another project in this upcoming year. I painted a lot this year. Six kill teams. I am super happy. I love kill team. Kill team is a really, really good game. And my Fel Gore Ravagers, which number one, I was talking about what models I would save on a sinking ship or on a burning building. The Fel, I might have to save the Fel Gore Ravagers because these guys beat Scott the Miniature Maniac and Kill Team. And that felt pretty cool. It was a little bit of a stomping. What can I say? I'm pretty good at Kill Team, but ah, I really, really like the Fel Gore Ravagers. Something kind of different in the world of Warhammer 40k. A couple of them have las guns and chain swords, but. Overall, they're very, very fantasy miniatures. I really, really like them. I painted two different Space Marine kill teams. I painted my our, my faction of female Space Marines that a bunch of people online got really mad at me for, but I really like how they turned out. I got some custom heads from Anvil Industries. 
and all of the weapons are magnetized, which was a giant waste of time because there's really only one loadout I go with because it's like the most optimal thing in my games of Kill Team. Every now and then I'll bring a couple of extra bolters to take advantage of bolter discipline, but overall, you bring the plasma, you bring the combi plazas, you bring the plasma pistols, like you just bring the really, really good strength seven and strength eight shooting because you just have to. Index kill teams are still in a really, really rough spot. They're getting basically discontinued, so gotta make these guys work or these ladies work when I can. And speaking of making things work, one thing that I think I kind of dropped the ball on this year is Age of Sigmar. I played with the Dominion box when it came out, the Cruel Boys versus the new Thunderstrike Stormcast, and it was really fun. And I bought an army because of it. I bought the Sylvaneth and I painted them up in a weekend and I'm like 80% happy with them and then I put them in a box and they did not leave the box all year. I did take them out of the box once to paint a couple of swords and this guy's super cool little thingies, but I'm not super happy. I was trying Streaking Grime for the very first time and it I it could not do it. Streaking Grime is great stuff, but I think you have to use it smartly. Like Streaking Grime would have worked great on the A5 speeder bus because it's a block with a little bit of detail on it. This is detail in the shape of a man. It's absolute ridiculousness. There's no way to get a Q-tip or to get a little makeup sponge in there to wipe off the Streaking Grime. So. I painted these guys really carefully and really nicely, and then I put Streaking Grime on and it turned them brown. They're, I really like this army and I would like to play some Age of Sigmar because it is a really, really fun game, but it didn't quite happen this year. I still, I have, I don't know how the point system works in Age of Sigmar, but I, if I would compare it to Warhammer 40,000, I'd probably say I have like a thousand points. A thousand points of Age of Sigmar, not quite enough to play a real game, the way Games Workshop wants me to play a game, but I do like the Sylvaneth. And maybe if I just got like a Lariel, the Ever Queen, that would be enough points to properly play a game. But I also feel like I'd want to spice these guys up quite a bit because they still feel really plain to me. There's some really nice details. Again, his clawed hand that's made of like diamondy, magical, emerald shimmerness. But overall, eh, I'm just kind of okay with these guys. One thing I was really surprised to see when I looked at this table, because one of my first loves and main loves is the Necrons. I only painted like one Necron this year, and I don't know if I painted any Necrons last year. I painted this one little Doomstalker, and it was great. Ah, I remember get, I bought this guy because I was participating in a combat patrol tournament, and so I actually needed this guy to complete the combat patrol miniatures for my Necron army. And I love them. It's so much fun to paint the black and the white and the orange. And I remember I was binging Hoarders. Does anybody remember Hoarders from TLC? That's the, I remember it vividly staring at this model because that is exactly what I was doing when I was painting this guy up. And ah, I need to work on my Necron some more. I think because I bought a, I had a Necron army when I was in high school and then I finished it. I repainted everything. I did all of the bases. I painted all of the trim and the details. I finished the characters. It's all done. And I think because it's done, I haven't really been adding much to it because, you know, my Black Templar, I added 2000 points this year, but I probably added 3000 points of actual miniatures. So there's a whole bunch still left in the painting desk where my Necrons just look pretty. They just look pretty on the shelf, all nice and finished. But I do like the Necrons and I would like to add some of the new cool things because my Necron army is very much like a 2012 Necron army. Before they added what, like 15 new super cool miniatures. And so there's a whole new era of Necrons that I am completely unfamiliar with. And I would really like to try out on the tabletop. This Doomstalker is pretty excellent. I performed unbelievably badly in the tournament. I lost every single game. Actually, no, I won the first game on accident because I got the 10 extra victory points for having a painted army and my opponent didn't. But my first game went okay. And then after that, I got curb stomped. But the Doomstalker, I mean, this thing arguably shouldn't even be in Comet Patrol because it's so good. It has a beautiful and vulnerable save. It has reanimation protocols for some reason, even though it's a vehicle. This thing was the MVP by far. But yeah, ah, Comet Patrol is really fun. I'm very, I'm very proud of this table full of miniatures. But if I could like make up what this table looks like next year, I would actually like it to be fewer models. 
There's too many models. There's just so much. There's so much to keep track of. But I would love to see like a couple of combat patrols, enough miniatures to finish a few of these other war games that I've talked about. The Armada ships, like all three of my different factions painted nicely and the oils actually worked. And I mean, this guy needs his baby brother, the war, the war hound Titan. It definitely does not need a big brother. The war, I don't, I have no desire to paint the Warlord Titan. It looks like, I mean, I know what this was like to put together and to paint, and it was a mess. A Warlord Titan is like, oh my, off the screen. It would be so ridiculously big and unwieldy. Not shown on this table is actually 12 terrain boards I built and painted this year, all based on our terrain. Every single month we have a brand new terrain set, and this month we have the Plasma Pipes a totally tubular set of terrain that includes pipes, generators, couplings, and the cutest little skeleton workers you've ever seen. With magnet ready slots, it is the perfect way to bring some cover saves to your games of Warhammer 40,000 or a bunch of different war games. We've used it for some different stuff. And speaking of that other stuff, if you always want to be up to date on the goings on here at Eons of Battle and be entered into our monthly giveaways, this month we're picking three viewers to receive this month's terrain. You can follow the link in the description below to sign up to our newsletter. 431 war gaming miniatures. There, I know that there's other stuff out there, like there's busts and there's statues, but honestly, it doesn't really interest me unless it's a toy, unless it's actually for a game that I can play with my buddies. Ah, <sighs> so many of these miniatures, but so few of them have actually gotten played with. I would say probably half of these miniatures, maybe a little more, have actually gotten played with this year. And I would like to change that. Maybe spend a little bit less time painting and a little bit more time figuring out how to actually play some of these games. Usually, I work really hard and get a couple of demos in, and then it's just, it's just hard. It's just hard to keep the momentum up. But man, I think next year, I, and I'm sure I said this last year too, but I think next year is going to be the year of gaming. And I'm going to get all of these things ready to rock and roll. But speaking of rocking and rolling, please leave a comment below of how many you models you finished this year or what models that you are most proud of or excited that you have accomplished. Or what did you splurge on and what did you get for yourself this year or, or last year that is just a project that you're really, really excited about? I would love to hear about it. And I'll probably read a bunch of your comments and get really excited and whatever you bought to and Maybe I'll pick it up too and paint it. We'll see what happens. I have absolutely no self-control. Thanks for watching.